It's a battle of wills in the Class 1A state soccer title game as top-ranked Nevada faces second-ranked Sioux City Bishop Heelan. The Crusaders boast the state's top defense by only allowing four goals all season. Plus, they haven't allowed a goal in nearly a month. Today, they'll take on one of the state's best offenses as the Cubs have averaged more than six goals a game. A state title hangs in the balance next on Iowa Public Television. Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Soccer Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Uh, what do you want to listen to? Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Soccer Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. state championship soccer. Iowa Public Television is proud to bring you the Iowa Farm Bureau, Iowa High School Girls Athletic Union State Soccer Championships. And it starts with a Class 1A showdown here at County Stadium in Des Moines as top-ranked Nevada takes on number two, Bishop Heelan. Hi again, everyone, with Justin Borster. This is B.J. Shaben. What a matchup we have for everyone in game number one, Justin defense versus offense here. Well, I'll tell you what, B.J., it's going to be an interesting matchup today because Nevada and Heelan have the both, both uh, have the same kind of records out there with uh, Nevada losing one game and Heelan uh, losing two. So it's a, a very similar pathway. So it should be interesting today. When you look at the Cubs, I mean, they are loaded with offense. They have six players who have recorded hat tricks, but they are led by Abby Stevenson. Well, Abby, Abby Stevenson's a very interesting player after having a discussion with the head coach of Nevada. You know, she'll play along the line. It doesn't matter where. She might play number nine, seven or 11, so left and right. Um, if the opposition play a high line, she, they'll play the ball in behind for her. And if they play a deep line, she'll like to get it at feet and run at them. And for the Bishop Heelan Crusaders, this is the team that's bullied their way here to the state title game. And they've got Lauren Bleeker, a Northern Iowa recruit. Well, it's interesting because Lauren Bleeker is going to play in the forward role on the right-hand side. Hasn't scored many goals this season, but is effective with the ball at her feet, taking on players. She gets in behind. She'll pull two defenders with her, leaving space in behind. And, and that's how they score their goals. She just assists. Beautiful conditions here in Des Moines. In fact, 72 degrees right now. Breeze ever so gently blowing out of the southeast as we get you ready for this Class 1A state championship game as it's time now to turn it over to the public address announcer, Al Hilton. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to County Soccer Complex and Championship Saturday of the 2015 Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Soccer Tournament. At this time, we'd like to direct your attention to the center of the field for an awards presentation. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Golden Plaque of Distinction Award honors the Iowa coach who has demonstrated a successful career while making notable contributions towards school, community, and the coaching profession. 
Presenting this year's award is Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Executive Director Mike Dick and Soccer Administrator Jason Essener. This year's recipient of the Golden Plaque of Distinction in Girls Soccer is Council Bluff St. Albert's coach Randy Salyers. Randy has been the head coach at Council Bluff St. Albert since 1994 and has led his team to seven state tournament trips, including this year. His 1998 team was one of eight teams to qualify for the inaugural IGHSAU State Soccer Tournament when St. Albert was the smallest soccer school in Iowa at that time. This year also marks Randy's final season as the St. Albert head coach. Randy has been active with the growth of high school soccer in Iowa his advice has been sought by schools beginning new programs, and he has also held various positions in the Council Bluffs Youth Soccer Organization. He just completed a term on the IGH SAU Soccer Advisory Board. Randy and his wife of 44 years, Marty, are the parents of Abby and Melissa, who both played soccer for their dad. The couple also have four grandchildren. Presenting the 2015 recipient of the Golden Plaque of Distinction Award in Girls Soccer from Council Bluffs, St. Albert, Randy Salyers. Congratulations, Coach Salyers. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing, face the flag. Gentlemen, kindly remove your hats as we honor the greatest nation in the world. Des Moines Roosevelt graduate Daniel Luckett will sing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Let's meet the teams now competing for the 1A state championship. The visiting team will be the Nevada Cubs. <laughs> Reserves for Nevada. Sky Borton, Abby Lindsay, Aaron Francis, Carolyn Wagner, Sydney C, Hattie Rhodes, Aaron Selberg, Izzy Kaputska, Sam Fullerton, and Grace Francis. 
The head coach is Randy Davis. Assistant coaches Mark Rhodes and Justin Evans. The home team will be the Bishop Helan Crusaders. Reserves for Bishop Helan, Emma Seeley, Rhea Greer, Maddie Peck, Maddie Brown, Alex Fox, Claire Herbst, Andrea Holes, Callie Ryan, Anna Seeley, Emma On Ryan, and Lexi Stolen. The head coach is Jared Bodemer. Assistant coaches Jeremy Reiner, Andrew Smith, and Lawrence Jensen. And now for your starting lineups for the Cubs. Abby Stevenson, Michaela Matuska, Kaylee Krushwitz, Holly Kugler, Ellie Kassebaum, Mara Rhodes, Abby Bremer, Reagan Saunders, Katie Kassebaum, Lexi Krushwitz, and Clara Spohr. And now let's meet the starters for the Crusaders. Tristan Beaulieu, Lauren Bleeker, Mackenzie Higley, Katie Glover, Jensen Fralick, Rachel Vondrak, Jessica Brown, Taylor Beaulieu, Chloe Wetzbarger, Grace Hanno, and Mary Kate Skaggs. Your officials, the referee is Tyler Eason, first assistant, Jamie James, second assistant, Nasser Sinanovich, the fourth official is Saeed Karimi. Good luck to both teams and let's play championship soccer. We are ready to go for the Class 1A state championship game. You've got Nevada, top ranked in the state at 19 and one against the Bishop Healing Crusaders ranked second at 19 and two. Let's take a look at the Cubs lineup who will be the visitor on the scoreboard today. They're making their second straight state championship appearance with nine starters off of last year's team. Here's how they're gonna line up. You've got Katie and Ellie Kassebaum, Stevenson, Kugler, Krushwitz, and Rhodes. On the other side, you've got Bremer, Matuska, Saunders, and Krushwitz. And in the net is gonna be Clara Spore who has 15 shuts at shutouts so far this season. Meanwhile, for Bishop Helan Crusaders, going to be making their best, which is a 15th straight state appearance in Class 1A. They've missed state only three years. They're going to line up like this as they chase that elusive state championship. You've got Skaggs and Brown. Your other forward's going to be Bleeker. Your midfielders are Freilich, Wetzbarger, and Vondrak. Your defensemen, Bullyu, Hanno, Glover, and Higley. And in a net is going to be Tristan Bullyu, who actually didn't start playing in at goal until last year. She actually switched after her sophomore season after being the leading goal scorer for Bishop Helan after that sophomore campaign. So we're ready to go. Nevada going to be wearing their purple uniforms with white numbers. And Bishop Helan, who's still getting some last minute words of encouragement from their head coach, Jaron Bodemore, as they're going to be wearing their whites with blue numbers as we are ready to go it is Bishop Helan and Nevada each team trying to win their first state title in fact here at the girls state soccer championships Justin there's only been 10 teams that have taken home state championships since it got started in the mid 90s I know that's interesting um, you know just 10 teams taking taking home a state championship and you know just going back to to this game here uh, it's going to be interesting. I think Nevada from the start are just going to push at them and, and press them high. Uh, and I think that uh, Bishop Heelan are going to drop off deep and maybe try and counterattack as they plant one into the bottom right-hand side. Just to get it going, trying to track it down is Bleeker. She's the one to keep an eye on for the forwards. We'll center it, but it's way wide as Bremer tries to put it ahead for Nevada. So Bishop Heelan. 
They've guided their way here. They've got a victory over St. Albert's in the quarters, 2-0, and then knocked off Waterloo Columbus, 1-0. But they've been on quite a defensive streak. They've only allowed four goals this season, and their defense has been their offense, nine straight shutouts, 18 for the season. It just goes to show there, BJ, that they might be difficult to break down today, so it'll be interesting to see. So Bishop Heelan, after that one has played out, what makes the Crusaders so tough defensively? You've had a chance to watch them through the week here leading up to this title game. Well, they play with a, they play with a tight back four and they keep it very compact. They play three in the middle. Uh, they'll play two holding midfielders with one attacking midfielder. Um, and they, they, they play the system really well. They keep it tight. Uh, I'll be interested to see if they tuck their outside forwards in uh, in transition. And for Nevada, they've been a lot of offense this year. In fact, they're second in the state in goals scored with over 100, averaging over six per game. So Nevada will wheel and deal here at the top with Mara Rhodes. She'll send it towards the net. There's Stevenson who's there, but this one's going to roll out. Good delivery. Abby Stevenson broke away from uh, the center back just off the shoulder. Uh, maybe she should have timed to run a little more and bent pulled away at a slight angle where she could have come on and headed that ball. Bishop Heelan to begin the season was actually ranked fifth. They worked their way up the rankings throughout the season. Just two setbacks this year. And one was against Urbandale back on May the 16th. And then they also lost to Lewis Central 2-0 back in the early portion of the season. In fact, uh, early April is when they lost that match. So each team has had it into their zone once so far. And you can tell there's a little bit of nerves out here as well. Yeah, I think it's going to take, take them some time to settle into the game. Um, like, like you mentioned, BJ, they've, they've had two attacks. This could be end to end. And a lot in the middle here so far. Defensively, Nevada trying to play it back, but it's taken away nicely there by Skaggs, and this one will roll out, so Nevada will put it back in play. And Spore has been really good defensively. It's Nevada's offense that's really kind of overshadowed what type of season she's had so far. Just six goals allowed this year. Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting, and, and obviously, it could be the shape of the back four and, and how Nevada have been defending throughout the season. Um, so, you know, it's all it's all around, but, you know, credit to the goalkeeper. You know, I believe she's pulled off some great saves this year and uh, kept them in some games. Down the field with Heel and Bleeker trying to go one on one here. Trying to be fended off by Kugler. We'll center it back towards the middle and this one's pushed out by the Cubs. Kassebaum working with the ball now to Stevenson out ahead to Kassebaum who will leave it for Stevenson on the far right she shoots towards goal and it's held in great build up there BJ ball played into a little combination uh, played him behind for, for for Abby Stevenson so you know this this could be the setting they setting the tone right now so Tristan Beaulieu comes up big again as Nevada with the best attack of the day so far, getting a shot on goal there. Just looking at Bishop Heelan here, uh, Bleak has just drifted out wide here, and it looks like they're going to try and feed her every single time. The, both attacks have come down the right-hand side for Bishop Heelan. Turnover. Back into the zone as Kassabaum will try to lay it ahead, but again, Heelan playing back defensively with four to try to take that rush off. And now we have a stoppage here, or no stoppage. A lot of contact. This has been somewhat physical here early on. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with the challenge. It was uh, a good stern challenge. I think she won the ball and uh, play goes on. Kugler gonna be locked in on Bleeker. Bleeker cannot come catch up to the ball. So as we mentioned, there's a lot of contact here going on in this game. Check this out. 
Reagan Saunders looks like she could be a handful there. I mean, she, she's a... Uh, uh, looks like she's going to want the ball in at feet. She's going to be a problem for the center back. She looks strong. So uh, this is interesting. The road to the tourney rather interesting as for Bishop Heelan. As uh, they came up with victories over St. Albert 2-0. But beating Waterloo Columbus 1-0. In fact, took it all the way to the end. And Mary-Kate Skaggs, who will patrol the middle. For Bishop Heal, and she actually had the assist in that game winning goal as Cassabon will have it in the offensive zone. Here's Stevenson. Goes to the outside, will put it towards the net, and this one's going to be handled easily by Bouillou. She can handle it off of the dribble. She'll be playing basketball at Morningside coming up next year. Both teams, though, doing a nice job clogging it up and sending enough players back to make sure that nothing can get beyond them. So the toss in Krushwitz will steal it for Nevada. Skaggs put her foot into it, and Nevada will toss it back in here. Already had a couple of shots on goal here for Nevada, but nothing into the net. And it's been a long time, in fact, nearly a month since Bishop Heelan has allowed a goal. You have to go back to May 16th when they lost to Urbandale 1-0. Nevada trying to continue to put the pressure on, but this one turned over. As Bremer brings it across midfield. You can see Abby Stevenson already has had two shots on goal, and she's going to be a handful for Bishop Heelan's back line. Um, Having, uh, having had a conversation with Coach Davis earlier on today, I asked him specifically the role of Abby Stevenson, and he said, you know, she's going to get a free role up front. She's going to be allowed to drift, come into the hole, turn and take on players, or play up high on the line. So uh, it would be interesting to see how she does today. Well, these two teams have a lot of experience, Justin. I mean, they've been in the state tournament year after year. Nevada played in the finals last year against Davenport Assumption before falling. Bishop Heelan has been to the state championship game three out of the last four years. So I think the jitters might be gone now, you know, with a lot of experience out on the field. I mean, is there an advantage either way? Do you know, I think uh, with the experience of playing in the state championships and we're now close to 15 minutes in the game, I think the jitters have gone. Um, you know, coaches always tell the players, you know, your first pass, your first header, first tackle, make it count, you know, and that's going to help with the confidence and it's going to affect them positively throughout the game. Braylick will have this one go off the side of her foot and it's staying in. Boy, just wiggled along the line. As here comes Heelan on the attack. The opposite side, the shot goes high. That was a good As little build Bishop Heelan had a nice attack there by Jessica Brown. Yeah, it was a good build up there. Um, I think Nevada have just got to be aware of the weak side. They were really, really compact. Uh, the left, uh, right back didn't check her shoulder, so she didn't see her coming, you know, on the weak side. So she was just drifting in there on the far post. Now they'll find Bleeker here on the side. It's a foot race to the ball and will be nudged out by Kugler. Good matchup brewing there between Kugler and Bleeker. I think another player you've got to be aware of here is Jessica Brown because as Bleak had got that ball, she was drifting in at pace on the far post. It gets deep. Nevada will try to advance it out. And it will finally be kicked away by Matuska. Now Casabon will lean forward. Nevada really packing it in. As Heelan, very talented with their front line. They've had a lot of possession on their side so far here in this first half. You know, I, I tell you what, BJ, um, they've surprised me. They've really come at, they've come at Nevada, and they're pressing them high, and like you said, they're keeping possession, and I think they're doing well. Braylick cannot connect. 
with Brown. Sunda Veda will get it back. And it looks like we're going to get some subs into the ball game here for the Nevada Cubs. Ellie or Aaron Selberg will come in along with Sky Borton, the sophomore. And also in is going to be Sydney C. So Coach Randy Davis going to his bench here early. And coming out of the game is going to be Holly Kugler to get a little bit of a rest. Along with Abby Bremer and Ellie Kassebaum also getting a rest here for Nevada. The Cubs have played through some injuries. And uh, quite a, in fact, Kassebaum, Ellie playing through a, what, torn ACL? Yeah, correct. Uh, I think Coach Davis is actually monitoring her and managing her throughout this game because, yeah, Ellie, Ellie Kassebaum has, uh, has a torn MCL. I mean, it's got to be difficult to play on that at this point. And, of course, playing three games in three days, you have to manage some minutes. So yeah. Randy Davis with his line change there trying to do that. And the midfielders, you've noticed for Heelan, all have drifted back once Nevada has been able to push it across midfield. Yes, and uh, the back line's dropped off deep, and then the midfielders has dropped off deep, and they've kept it very, very compact. And they're, they're doing a good job of winning possession and uh, trying to play the ball out quickly. This one played from the back as Rhodes tried to shuffle that one ahead as she does to Casabon. And again, Heelan will kick it away. This one headed up. Playing Bishop Heelan with the right amount of players in the perfect spot so far here in the first half. Nevada has been able to get a couple of shots on goal. Heelan with just one. But other than that, the defenses have really played well, jamming it up in the middle. Yeah, I've noticed that uh, um, Bishop Heelan, uh, you know, they've closed down a lot quicker. I think Nevada need to close down more in the midfield and, and try and win the ball. But they're, they're allowing Bishop Heelan to play. Uh, so the ball retention uh, on their part has been good. Bleeker again will toss it in. Going to be playing soccer at Northern Iowa. And this one jammed out. And it will belong to Nevada. When we talked to Coach Bodemer, he said that his team really needed to find a rhythm heading into the state tournament. He's been said they've been working on that. Feels like defensively they've been there, but I think offensively in this first half, they've looked as sharp as they have all state tournament long. I think they've set the tone, to be honest with you, BJ. I mean, they've found a rhythm, and they, they, they look a little more conf confident on the ball. They've uh, kept ball retention. So Nevada, Nevada just need to settle down. I think they're rushing it. Sydney C with the toss in here. A little too strong, and it will be turned over. It's a poor throw, and I mean, Abby Stevenson is posted up against the defender. All she has to do is throw it to her feet and then restart from there. Ellie Kassebaum will re-enter the game. She'll come in for Abby Stevenson. Kassebaum, 36 points so far this year. Has two goals here at the state tournament. And again, re-entering after a bit of a rest. And Nevada with the pushback. Well, long one as it rolls all the way to Bullyu. Number 19, Chloe uh, Wartsberger is doing actually a very good job in there. Um, in a holding midfield role. She's just cleaning it up, gets the ball, plays it into feet, comfortable. I, I like her. So I wonder if she could be a difference maker here. Could be Skaggs. Whistled on the play, so Nevada will get it back. Yeah, she's called for the foul. Reagan Saunders, she's also got a bad left knee. Able to hang on here. A little hard on the challenge. Maybe five. 
Still a scoreless game here with about 24 minutes to play in the opening half. Healing. Again, looking to bring it deep into the zone. Bleeker will center it. And Nevada right there. So here come the Cubs. Casabon played on that state championship basketball team. Good footwork to the middle and cannot get her foot on it. Talk about that. You mentioned Wetzbarger and her defensive movement. Good steal there. Yeah, she tracked back and got her body between the defender and the ball and won it. Uh, uh, she, her work rate's good so far. Take a look at this footwork again, but it was just the concentration here of Wetzbarger. And as you can see, Wetzbarger gets, just gets herself in between her. Nips in there with the right foot, just nicks the ball away. Even took a kick to the midsection now after the foul. This one headed or redirected out by Nevada. And healing again. Quicker on the possession, now we'll just play it back. Healing not known for putting up a lot of offense, but they have really held the possession here and have had made Nevada work quite a bit in this first half. Bondrak has it taken away by Crushwitz. Bishop Heelan have uh, really surprised me here, yeah? and maybe the message from the coaching staff is, hey, we're, we're at the, the state championships. Let's just go for it. Let's enjoy it. Let's have some fun while we're out there playing. Each team with a little bit of a change. Kaylee Ryan, the sophomore, will come in along with Lexi Stolen for Bishop Heelan. Now for Nevada, Abby Stevenson will return along with Holly Kugler and Abby Bremer. So some changes here for both teams as they try to keep players fresh. They've really had to work a lot since being here. Nevada, of course, defeated Bondurant Farrar in the quarterfinals 4-0. And defeated Iowa City Regina, jumping out to an early lead, but winning it 3-1 there in the semifinals. Their only loss this season was to Class 3A's Ankeny Centennial. They made the trip here to Des Moines and to Muscatine seven times, but no state championships for Nevada in soccer. Trying to become title town. Of course, we alluded to the fact that Nevada won the girls' state basketball championships back in uh, March. And now trying to win it here in soccer. This one sent in deep and bull you will just scoop it up. What I've noticed here so far, BJ, is that uh, Nevada's lines, they're not connected to the back line into the midfield. As you can see here, that's easy. There's three versus one in the middle there. You know, so it's the upper hand for Bishop Heelan. Here's Selberg trying to break through. As they send three in with the forwards, Stevenson is going to have it taken away. Abby Stevenson has drawn a double team here so far, and rightfully so. She leads the team in goals scored. Now Nevada with a little bit of a possession as Kassebaum knocks it back. And this one sent high and wide and back. Nevada need to move the ball quickly, especially in the final third of the field. Um, you know, like earlier on with the first chance that uh, Abby Stevenson got, the quick combination play was one, two touch and behind their back four, which created opportunities. If they can do more of that, I think they'll get more chances. Casabon with the header back, but it goes right to Heelan. Higley has it taken away by the Cubs. Matuska can't keep it in, and Heelan will toss it in. Quickly back the other way with the Crusaders.
to the middle as they tried to connect it to Stolen. And Nevada holding for the moment. Boy, good dribbling there on that far side by the Crusaders. And that one's just going to be poked out by Reagan Saunders, the senior. Wartsburg is doing a, a great job of uh, covering ground. I mean, she's going left to right, and there she goes, heading the ball again, so she's winning it. They've just got to be aware in the midfield when she does win it and goes forward that one of the other midfielders needs to hold in for her. I've noticed that two or three are going forward, and they're leaving holes in behind, just like this, where Abby Stevenson can get the ball. It almost seems like Heelan's also setting something else up as they're overloading the far side of the field and leaving Bleeker wide open here to the near side, almost as if they've forgotten about her. Yes, correct, and uh, uh, maybe that's a game plan. You, you never know where they can match her up 1v1 on a quick switch. Well, she's been so dominating this year. And again, Nevada not really with an opportunity here on the possession. And it looks like they're going to go to their bench. Randy Davis going to be bringing in Katie Kassebaum back in. And she'll come in to spell Aaron Selberg, the junior. And Raya Greer coming in here for Bishop Elan. And she'll take the place of Rachel Bondrack. First half clock dwindling down here. Just over the halfway mark. Scoreless game between Nevada and Bishop Heelan. There's a deep buildup to be a defense versus offense matchup, and so far it's been all about defense. Nevada with a couple of shots on goal. Heelan has been able to get one there. But other than that, I mean, a lot has been played here at midfield. The intensity of the game has been uh, pretty good this uh, this year because obviously it's a little bit cooler out there, so it's not as hot. But it's end to end. They're getting into tackles. They're closing space down both teams, so it, it does help, especially with the temperature. Yeah, we didn't know what to expect with the weather this year when the state tournament opened up on Thursday. A lot of rain. In fact, it rained throughout the entire day for all classes as Blinker sends it to the middle, and this one goes wide. We tried to set up the header. And now Nevada will come back on the attack. Kassebaum controlling it. Now to Stevenson. Trying to swim it to the middle, had it poked away. Now we'll regain control. Matuska to Kassebaum, and that one taken away by Bishop Heelan. Greer stepped in front. And Nevada, for the first time today, really holding the possession. Now Stevenson trying to go through two and does. Gets the ball ahead. Here's Stevenson on the outside, going to be tied up, cannot get a shot off. And actually, Bishop Heelan took the punishment there as McKenzie Higley is down. Higley is down after taking a shot from Stevenson. Might have gotten a cleat to the shin. And she's in pain. We spoke about those combinations earlier on. And again, Abby Stevenson looked to combine. Uh, I think she was probably, Abby was better off going on the outside, taking the ball with the left foot outside of the defender into the box, which might have created a better opportunity. As she went to strike that ball, she hit the defender in the shins. That can be painful. Higley chopped down. And she's been locked on Stevenson here on the early goings. Maybe some frustration, too, as Stevenson really tried to wall up the ball. And that will put Mackenzie Higley down, the junior, as the trainers and head coach Jared Bodemer out there to take a look at her. So each team trying to win their first ever state championship. And it's a scoreless game with 15.26 to play here in the first half. 
Blick has got him behind twice for Bishop Heelan. Um, two fantastic crosses with her right foot. I can see why she's probably the leading assist uh, player this year for Bishop Heelan. So Higley going to get back up on her feet. And this is unlike the international play, where if you may have been watching it, where you can kind of, well, they do fake an injury <laughs> a lot to try to draw attention from the officials. But here you could tell Higley really got cranked on. You know, you know, it's interesting because when you watch uh, the, the, the FIFA World Cup on the men's side, there's diving all over the place, you know, and it slows the game down and they're looking for free kicks outside the box and that going forward. But when you look at the FIFA World Cup for the, the, the women's game, they don't. You don't see much of that. So it's get up and play and it's end to end. So Alex Fox will come into the ball game here for Higley at the defender position. And you can hear the referee, Tyler Eason, mic'd up here today. In the background, talking things over with the players, too, as well. Are we good, sir? All right. All right, here we go. So we resume action as Blinker will send it deep. And no white jerseys there. Coming up to scoop up the ball is going to be Spore. last year as a sophomore gave up a couple of goals in the first half and a windy first half against Davenport Assumption and of course you can forget the play of Rose Ripslinger the Gatorade player of the year for four straight years and Rose of course played at the University of Iowa but suffered a devastating knee injury and can't wait to see her back out on the field soon Bishop Heelan will make the advancement with Freilich towards the middle. He'll be caught up in traffic. Freilich, Freilich again with the control. Here's a little bit of a shot, but handled easily by Spohr. 79 saves this season for Clara Spohr coming into the game. And really hasn't seen a whole lot of action. In fact, Talking with head coach Randy Davis, he said the most action she saw was when Justin Evans, their assistant coach, in warm-ups would pepper her with the ball. In fact, sometimes he had to tell him to ease up on her, but he said, Coach, she's got strong enough hands. She will not break a finger. And she did not. <laughs> As Stevenson will send one deep. <laughs> Going down for the ball is Beaulieu, and that's why Beaulieu has been so outstanding in the last month saw the ball well yeah Boyo has done a great job back there she's covered a goal a um, couple of dives to the left and right as Bleeker comes in on the far post a kitty corner that hit the post that one just sailed high by Bleeker an odd angle and now we've got some action end to end couple of shots on goal but we're still scoreless here Bleeker, we mentioned, it's kind of playing out here in no man's land, one on one. Now we'll try to go to the sideline. Nevada will punch it towards the middle. And this one caught up. Nevada will get it on the turnover with Krushwitz. Pass midfield, but it's sent right back by Hanno. Stevenson to Casabon. Tries to play the side. And Wagner holds her own for Heelan. Again, Heelan's defense at midfield has been outstanding. Wetzbarger showing off. Yeah, Wurzburg is doing a great job just sitting in front of her back four. She's about eight, eight to ten yards in front of them. She cleans everything up. Good on the ball. Good feet as she receives it now. Opened up. Right foot forward. Checks her shoulder. And she, she's the one that's been distributing into Bleeker. Bleeker working against Kugler again. Trying to get some space using her teammate there as Freilich tried to lay it in. Now this one... Heads towards the middle, but easily played there by Spore. 
Blick is very deceptive. I mean, it doesn't look like she's going to get to that ball as it's about across the end line, and just from nowhere she gets there and whips the ball in. Not a whole lot of traffic out in front of Bullyu today. Nevada's shots have been pretty much direct and open. Yeah, they, they, they haven't really built it up. It's, it's been, like you said, very direct, and they're looking, they bypass in the midfield most of the time. I'm going to question their back four. They play very, very deep, which is allowing space for Bishop Healam in between for the center forwards to come in and connect. Now so, a steal here. It's Kate Glover now. Nevada, as you mentioned, Justin, are playing it back. They go to the middle. Here's Bleeker. Oh, man, she about got free, but Kugler just was able to do enough. Bleeker will just hit it high, and it's over the net. Bleeker was slightly off balance there. She, she actually could have brought that down. Maybe she's out of energy as the cross comes in from the left-hand side. It's a good chance. Mis misplaced a touch with the left foot, went behind her. Rachel Bondrak now into the game for Bishop Heelan. Also, Aaron Selberg is in for Nevada. And Sky Borton coming back into the game here for the Cubs. Scoreless game, 10.38 to play here in the first half. It's the Class 1A State Championship with Justin Forster. I'm P.J. Shabin here from the County Stadium in Des Moines. As it's one of three title games here on Iowa Public Television. Here's Crushwoods. Back to the middle, and it's taken away kindly by Wetzbarger. Now trying to push it ahead, and Spore will come up to glove. BJ, the combination in the midfield of Van, Van Drack, Wartsberger, and uh, Greer is really, really working well. I mean, they're combining well, connecting the passes. Nevada really need to close down. They need to get tight in there because they're allowing them to play. Well, it may sound like there's a train coming through the field, but there are tracks literally about a stone's throw away from County Stadium here. And it adds a little essence, a little flavor to the state soccer championships. No, it's not a remake of Brewster's Millions, but they're trying. And Nevada, that might be the horn that might wake him up offensively. Last few minutes, the momentum's been on the side of healing. And the ball's been on their side as they send it deep to Stevenson. She'll, it's a foot race to the ball, and that one's going to be punched out by Taylor Bullyu. When Nevada will add an extra midfielder here as Borton. Come back to the middle. Now they go to the back to crush which the defender on this side of midfield. Haven't seen a whole lot of that here so far in the first half. Matuska now to the side to Borden. Cannot get to the ball, but fed it off well by Fox of Healing. And this will be a toss in for Nevada. Borden with the toss to the middle. Up high for Kassebaum, who redirects it towards the middle. And this one is off of the foot of Healing. But just regathering it just in time was Katie Glover. And Nevada will again get another toss in. Boy, that one could have been disastrous. Borton, or Glover, excuse me, kind of whiffed on the ball. Yeah, Salberg coming in behind Kassebaum. She should have read that earlier. I mean, she was a little bit delayed off it. And, uh, you know, it allowed the defender to get in there and win the ball. It's just the timing of the movement. You've got to anticipate these things in the box. Playing at midfield. Good tackle. Boy, there was a big collision there. Shoulder, shoulder. Good job. As you heard good job. Good the job. referee Tyler Eason say good tackle as it was clean. As both players were playing the ball. Stevenson will try to nudge it away. Now Heelan will send it deep. But there are three Cubs back there. And this one will roll up to be played by Heelan. And we're going to get some substitutes into the game. Jensen Freilich for Bishop Heelan. And Jessica Brown also back into the game for the Crusaders. 
I think trying to also check back in. Jessica Brown trying to find her substitute. And she can <laughs> she can't get the attention of who she's supposed to sub for. Now the officials help out as Kaylee Ryan will come from the far side of the field back out. 650 to play here in the first half. Each team has had their chances healing. The few shots on goal, and in fact, one hit the post by Lauren Bleeker from the corner. That's about as close as we've been to seeing a goal come across. Leon! Now back to the middle. Come back here. Uh, Selberg come back here. This way. had it deflected Leon! out. But there will be a foul called here against Heelan. It's been a pretty clean first half, too, Justin. A lot of contact between the two, but Tyler Eason letting these two teams play. Yeah, it's, it's been a physical game, but like you said, Tyler Eason's done a great job of letting the game flow and playing advantage when needed. So it, it, it calls for entertaining soccer, so it's great. Now they punch it to the middle. Stevenson with a shot, but it's right at Beaulieu. She had traffic in front of her, and Beaulieu. Abby Stevenson just created enough space there as you can see, watch here when she wins the ball. So there you go, Abby Stevenson just creates enough space for herself on the touch. I mean, maybe she can just plant that into the bottom corner, just put a little bit of texture on the ball. Now another opportunity foul called here against Nevada. So trying to set it in here is going to be Bullyu. She does have an assist this year. And Beaulieu puts her right foot into it. She'll shade it to the side. Wetzbarger now will send it towards the net. Oh, collision as Spore tried to come up to get the ball. Everybody all right? Check everybody. Check white too. As coming in was Lexi Stolen, the sophomore. As that one was just held up there in the air. Right. Okay. Let's clear out. Yeah. Not a bad idea on the free kick to play it in white there for Wolfsburger, but. You look at the height that uh, Bishop Heelan have. I mean, maybe put one into the box and test the back four and see, see how they cope against them because they, they've got some height in the team. And this will be a toss in here for Heelan. Uh, not quite. And it will be turned over as Bleeker cannot get a handle on it. Looks like it was a foul throw. Schoolboy error. <laughs> straight up, straight up. And there is a little bit of uh, moisture out on the turf here today, which uh, can sometimes be unforgiving. But the cleats, well, they're digging into the surface too as well. We haven't seen a lot of slippage out there. Of course, it's taken a lot of moisture over the last couple of days. But no rain today so far, and I think it might stay away according to the forecast. Nope, full kick. Nope. Yeah, I mean the ball's zipped off the uh, off the surface today. Um, not as hot, it's nice and cool, uh, which is which is a bonus for the players. Mary Kate Skaggs will now come into the ball game here for Lexi Stolen. It's a little bit shaken up from a play just a few moments ago. Nearing the three minute mark here in the first half. As Nevada and Heelan have been going at it. I want to remind you coming up during the half we're going to have highlights of this year's Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Track and Field Championships which were held at Drake Stadium in Des Moines. You can catch them at halftime today or anytime at IPTV.org. Cubs on the prowl. Stevenson, a little bit of room, but it closes quickly. And now she'll shoot it to the side as Nevada will track it down with Selberg in the corner. Selberg will politely send it back towards the middle, but a little too much on the toes, it goes out.
What did you say to me last night that all three of these games are going to be a cracker? Yeah, they are, and this is a cracker so far. It's end to end. Um, I still think that Bishop Helam have been the better team so far in this match. Um, two minutes to go. I think they got, both teams are going to try and see this out to half time and um, rekindle their thoughts with the coaching staff and go from there for the second half. And want to remind you, we're going to be talking to both head coaches here at intermission. As we're going to talk with Jared Bodemer before the half, and then we'll visit with Randy Davis of Nevada coming up after intermission. So the Cubs trying to put something together here with a minute 20 to play in the first half. So they have it at midfield. Cubs will put it to Borton. Now to the middle, and Bullyu will just come in and scoop this one up. One minute to play here in the first half. When that ball went to Bullyu's feet, she just checked over her shoulder to have a look at the scoreboard and just see how many minutes are left. And she saw one minute and slowed it down before she distributed the ball. And the Cubs come up with a steal. That's Borton along this near sideline. And it's going to be stolen back by Fox. She's played well in the first half here. Bleaker to the corner to Skaggs. We'll try to send it in, but this one is going to be deflected out. With 22 seconds left to play, we're going to have a corner kick here coming up for Heelan. They've got to hurry. Bleaker will be doing the corner kick as both teams. Put the huddle out. Here's Bleeker towards the net. In the middle, this one's headed, but it is going to be in. Goal! Heelan gets it with six seconds left to play in the first half. It was Jessica Brown's head. Well, I'll tell you what, BJ, that was a pillar of strength as you see this corner come in. Wow, Jessica Brown just came in power behind that. Rose like a gazelle. What a finish. Do you class that as an own goal? No, I don't think so. I think it was going in anyway, but fantastic, fantastic finish. Reagan Saunders was right there and it went off of her right ankle. One nil. Bishop Heelan off of a corner kick with five seconds left to play here in the first half. Get on the scoreboard. The Crusaders have the lead. They carried most of the momentum throughout the first half and were able to come up with the goal off of the corner kick as time was winding down in the first half. Bleeker was the one who put it towards the net but went off the head of Jessica Brown. We're, we're going to go down to the field and be joined by Jared Bodemer, the head coach of Bishop Heelan and coach. What a flurry and activity at the end of the first half. You have to be happy with where you're at right now. Yeah, it was a great way to end the half. I mean, we've, we're, a, we're a really tall team. We have a lot of girls that are 5'10 and above, and set pieces and corner kicks are one of our strengths. So we were excited to get that last attempt there right before the half and to utilize it and to put it away. Uh, it was great. Gives us a little momentum going into the second half. Uh, but definitely a tough first half. Coach Bottomo, um You've been really strong in the midfield. I thought your three have done really well in there. What is your message to the players now for the second half? Well, I think we got to definitely continue to control the midfield. I think that's important. Uh, definitely, I mean, with Stevenson up top, uh, she's such a solid player for them. Uh, we have to win the midfield and try to um, absorb uh, what they're what they're doing and with their possession. Um, you know, they're they're a little bit more direct than we are. We uh, try to possess it a little bit and run it through our midfield, where they like to just basically play a little more direct to their forwards. So I think our mid midfield play is important, and for us to control it and run it everything through our midfield coach thank you so much for the time we'll see you in the second half all right thanks guys that's head coach of sioux city bishop Heelan jared bodemer as his team gets a goal from a corner kick as time was winding down at the end of the first half time now to go back to the studios we're going to be joined by paul yeager who's standing by 
with state track and field championship Thank highlights. you, BJ. Joining me now is Jim Kirby from Next Level Iowa. And Jim, this meet is just full of great returning runners. Paul, we have some of the best distance runners in the nation at the high school level. Let's talk about some of the returners. Rebecca Topham, Stephanie Jenks, Jasmine Stabler. These are all familiar names, and they're going to be on display this weekend. But there's also some new kids on the block as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. There's some freshmen. There's a freshman. Her name is Julie Schumacher from Assumption, and also her teammate, Joy Ripslinger. It's going to be fun to watch these young kids, too. And both of those are featured in the very first race we're going to show you. It's the 3,000-meter run in Class 3A. Double waterfall on the back stretch to start this race, Paul. It's a big field, and so this gives everybody a chance to have a good start. Not just big, but loaded. That's right. Okay, the Assumption uh, team has a great field. They got a, a, a freshman, Julie Schumacher, and a sophomore, Joy Ripslinger, names that are familiar to runners and fans of track and field. All right, so they are off, and uh, Schumacher is in a white top, Ripslinger in a red top. That's just kind of the way they like it. Julia likes the white, and you see her coming around and uh, making a pass as it is the two nights down the back stretch. Well, here's a freshman not acting like a freshman. She goes wire to wire, which is something freshmen just don't do in 3Ks. Julia, normally a back of the pack runner, she crosses the finish line for a state championship for her Davenport Assumption Knights. Joy, what a great uh, second half of the race you had. You uh, almost got Julia. What were you thinking? Um, those last couple laps, I saw it's kind of pulling away, and I knew that no matter what happened, it was going to end well. Hey, Julia, as a freshman, has it sunk in yet, what you just did? I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't think so. But it does feel great. Was it your plan to go out and lead from basically the start? <laughs> no. You just had to go, right? Right. All right, congratulations, girls. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Schumacher, the freshman, your state champion in the 3,000-meter run. I think we'll hear about her again. Joy Ripslinger, the sophomore, is second. And Amanda Taylor, the senior from Decora, is third. In the 3,000, Rebecca Topham, it's a repeat for her. The senior from Griswold is your state champ. Gwen Wright, second. Megan Mosky is third. In 2A, Adriana Kammerer, the senior from Regina of Iowa City. Megan Mooberry is second. And Ellie Friesen is third. In 4A, Stephanie Jenks, another state title. She wins the 3,000 for the the third time in her career, Mackenzie Yannick is second. On to the girls' 1500 meter run in class 1A. Another good run, including Rebecca Topham. That's the one to watch in this race. That's team. right, Rebecca Topham wrapping up her career as a senior on the Blue Oval. She's going to be in college next year. Uh, she's got a lot to live up to, and as you see, she starts in the back and always makes her late move. In the blue uniform and the pink headband, she'll be headed to Wichita State to run cross country and track. Also the champion in 3000. She's battled a lack of energy issue all season, but she is going to be a four-time champion in the 1500. A great cap to a great career for Rebecca Topham of Griswold. You know, Mike Jay was talking about this is your last lap on this blue track. What are you thinking when you think about that, all the victories? What are the things you're most proud of? I don't know. It's just hard to believe it's all over. And I just, I don't know where all the time went, but it feels awesome to accomplish everything I did, even though the last year didn't end the best. But, I mean, I did the best I could for my ability, so. When you look back, what are some of the things you're most proud of? Um, I don't know. Being Drake Relay's champion twice freshman year, that's always, I always think of that. And another dominating performance. Third straight title in the 1500 for Stephanie Jenks. The crowd comes to their feet, Jim. It was so moving. Uh, Stephanie breaks Katie Flood's record. She's out there by herself, and she has to motivate herself all the time. All right, and how they finish in this race was the same as the 3000 in Class 4 as the fans all come to their feet because they knew it was a big deal. I mean, you're rewriting the history books. You broke another one of Katie Flood's records. I mean, how do you keep doing it? Um, you know, it just... Talent only got me so far, and all the hard work and, you know, sweat and all the suffering I've done throughout practices, it's been paying off. Jenks is only a junior, but another state champion. Sets another record. Mackenzie Yannick, as we said, 1-2-3, the same for the 1,500 as it was the 3,000 class 4A. In 1A, there's Rebecca Topham, the senior. Gwen Wright, the junior from Pekin, who have a, we'll talk about a little bit later. And Megan Mosky from Woodbine is third. In 2A, it's Rachel Peter from Prairie City Monroe. She's the senior and your champion. Lucy Conroy is second. In 3A, Amanda Taylor was third in the 3,000, wins the 3A 1500 meter run. And now on to the 800. 
Once again, Paul, double waterfall to start this out to make sure this big field gets a fair shot. And there's going to be a little redemption for Gwen Wright. You know, for years, she's been finishing second to Rebecca Topham. This year, she gets the victory. Topham going for her fourth title in this race, three straight. Could it be four? We already saw her win the 1500. But that 800 is just a sprint, Jim. It really is. You know, it's a whole different uh, skill set for these athletes. And Gwen Wright, congratulations to her, you know, after all this time, finishes first and gets the championship. Now, Gwen, with about 200 to go, you know Rebecca's coming back. She's back there lurking. What were you thinking? I knew she would be coming. She got me in the 3,000. And I just knew I had to go on this race. Knew I had to kick. I counted on my endurance to help me get through. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And in the 800 meter run in class 3A, it's Joy Ripslinger. She was second earlier. Now she is the champion in this race. She was second in the 3000, the 1500, she gets a gold of her own and now sets a state record. 10 year old record you just broke. I mean, what are your thoughts coming down that straightaway? <laughs> Give it all I got. That's all you can do. All you can do is your best. And that's all you can ask for of yourself. Here's how they finished in class 3A. Joy Ripslinger, the sophomore from Assumption, is your champ. Amanda Taylor is second. Abby Jackson Cohot from Ballard is third. In 1A, Gwen Wright, as we mentioned, the upset there, wins the title in 1A in the 800. Rebecca Topham second, and Katie Dukes from Lennox is third. Jasmine Stabler helped push Clayton Ridge to a state title with wins like this in the 800. Macy Weber from Cascade is second. And in 4A, Stephanie Jenks, the junior, great performance. Larkin Chapman second. Erica Lewis, the senior from Waukee, is third. And now, on to the field events. The Shot Put Class 1A event included two flights of 12 competitors. All 24 throwers made three attempts. The eight girls with the longest throws moved on to the finals, earning three more attempts. Winners were determined by the longest throw out of all six attempts. Here's a look at the top three finishers in the Shot Put Class 1A event. Third place went to Jaden Wagner, a sophomore from Lawton Bronson with a distance of 38 feet, one and one quarter inches. In second place was Katen Tilgis, a freshman from Bishop Garrigan with 38 feet, three inches. The shot put class 1A champion was Shelby Williams, a junior from Pekin with a distance of 38 feet, 10 and a quarter inches. Last year, Williams played second in this event. My coach had me do a lot of hard work this year. I had lifting more than I did last year. I had a lot more working out after school, and um, I just had the love and support of my family, which helped a lot. Here's how they finished in the shot put in 2A. Kate Birchmeyer, a senior from Davis County, beat her own record that she set in 2014. In second place, Kiana Phelps from Kingsley Pearson. And in third place, Bryn Grunder from Durant. 3A shot put, Shelby Gunnels from Solon was first, J.C. Embray from Glenwood second, and from Dubuque Wallert, Maddie Neelis was third. Shot put in 4A, Erica Hammett, a junior from Clinton, is your state champion. From Linmar, Lanny Neidert is a senior and she was second, and Anna Hedges from Davenport West was third. The long jump, class 4A event, included two flights of 12 competitors. The 24 athletes each made three attempts for longest distance. The top eight finalists earned three more attempts. The longest distance out of all six jumps determined the winners. Here's a look at the top three long jumpers in class 4A. Third place went to Ariana Roll, a freshman from Linmar with 17 feet, eight and a half inches. Second place, Jamaica Lovon, a senior from Urbandale, 17 feet, nine and three quarters inches. The champion was Lexis Lovon, a senior from Urbandale with a distance of 19 feet, one inch. I've been struggling with injuries uh, back and forth uh, the previous years, but uh, this year I'm really healthy. And as you can see, I was able to pop up a 19. The 1A long jump, Mallory Vauter from BCLUW was your state champion. Lindsey Cook, a senior from Hudson, was second. And from Springville, Riley Menster, the freshman, was third. Alina Marcucci is your state champion in the class 2A long jump. She's from Northeast Goose Lake. Darian Wagner from New Hampton was second. And Brittany Kopis from Cascade is third. 
The 3A long jump, here is how they finish. Bailey Schminke from Boone, a senior, is your state champion. Peyton Malik, a freshman from Pella, is second. And from Spirit Lake Park, Jenna McCoy was third. Jim, the big three had a big meet. Paul, we're gonna be saying goodbye to some good seniors. Rebecca Topham from Griswold, she's gonna go to Wichita State. Jasmine Stabler from Clayton Ridge, she's gonna be a cyclone at Iowa State. Stephanie Jenks, a junior, we got one more year to watch her. And the sky appears to be the limit with her. Stephanie just keeps getting faster and faster and stronger and stronger. Who knows what she's able to do? From the long chart, we've only shown you a portion of what happened at the famed Blue Oval. We have all the finals and interviews at our website, ipTV.org slash sports. Now, let's head back to BJ. Thank you very much, Paul, here at the County Sports Complex in Des Moines, the Class 1A State Championship, and we do have a goal on the board as Jessica Brown was able to hit the header to get it in and just a very action-packed first half, entertaining for soccer fans at home. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think the key to this is how did Nevada take care of Wurzberger in the midfield because all the distribution for uh, Bishop Heelan has come from uh, number 19, Wurzberger, and, and she's the creator. They need to find a way to close her down. Let's take a look at the first half highlights here. As we talked about it, there was end-to-end -end action. Abby Stevenson was able to put a ball towards the net. The ball you has been strong for the Crusaders. In fact, uh, handled all the shots today. Defensively, this was the big one, the corner kick, as it went off of a Nevada player. Blaker gets the assist. Jessica Brown gets the goal, her 14th of the season in the first year at the state tournament. Let's go to Nevada's head coach, Randy Davis, who's standing by. Coach, a tough goal to see at the end of the first half after you guys have played so well defensively through the first uh, half year. Uh, most definitely. Uh, you you can see them going right in before half. It worried me with the corner coming at that moment. We were, we were there. We got ahead on it, and then deflected it, and their keep girl came in, got a piece of it, and knocked it in. So, you know, we're we're halfway there on it. So halfway doesn't count. It gives them the goal. So now we have we have to make up. So we'll try and change our lineup and begin, become a little more aggressive up top and see if we can equalize this game. Thank you very much, Coach, for the time. We'll see if some uh, what happens here in the second half. Okay, thank you. Randy Davis from Nevada joining us here as with Justin Borster, B.J. Shaven, the rest of the crew here at Iowa Public Television. We're ready to get the second half underway. Each team will switch sides. Nevada will be pushing the ball to the south as Casabon will get it started here for the Cubs, who've you know, had their chances here in the first half, put a lot of balls towards the net, when they, they've been able to break through, but the offensive possession, the time, on their side of the half, Heelan has really controlled it. With Nevada with a couple of clean breakaways, as Skaggs had this one go deep. And guess what? We're gonna see another corner kick coming up as this one went off of the foot of Reagan Saunders. So here's Lauren Bleeker again from the corner. The wind really not a factor in this one. Heelan leading it 1-0. They'll send it towards the net again. Another header. This one's going to be boxed out as it went off of the head. This time of Grace Hanno, the junior. And Nevada avoids further trouble here. Nevada conceded off a corner in the first half, so off a set piece. So coming into the second half, it's how do you deal, deal with the, the strength and the power of some of those tall girls coming into the... In, into the area so I mean Nevada need to pick up man on man they need to get tight they're allowing them too much space and a lot of play here towards the middle and this one's going to be sent out and the Nevada coaching staff telling their team to settle down pressing a little bit here in the early going of the second half they have not been down all tournament long now down one nil and this is where heelan has been rather dangerous at the state tournament. When they get the lead, they can play their ball, but they're continuing to attack here with Skaggs, and now it'll be just punched out. But this goes out on the end line, so it will be another corner kick here coming up for Heelan. I wonder if the wind's going to be affected. The wind's starting to build up now, so it's, it's working in favor of uh, Bishop Heelan. Trying to win their first-ever state title 
as Bleeker again puts her foot in it. This one a little high. No one able to get it out, and Nevada will try to kick it out as Kassebaum will redirect it. As she had tossed it to her sister. So Nevada trying to be on the prowl here with Kugler to Abby Stevenson. Sophomore will play it into the zone for the Cubs. Trying to hit it to Kassebaum, but it's poke checked away by Freilich. Bishop Heelan's midfield recovering really well there to win the ball, you know, just intercept the pass. And uh, out again as Wartsberger cleans up. Now Heelan with good moves, dribbling in the middle by Vondrak. And again, this one played to the middle but left open. Vondrak will come and get it. How about this? Vondrak towards the middle, but this one's going to be poked out by the Cubs as Rhodes... Left it out. Matuska having trouble. Vondarak played that ball into no man's land. There was no one there. She was probably better off going into Jessica Brown just about five yards to her left. You know, and then you keep ball retention and you build up. Kassebaum trying to hit Stevens, but again, Heelan's defense, they've just outnumbered the forwards here for Nevada. On a 5-3 to three margin, once the ball crosses midfield, as Aaron Selberg is getting set to check in for Nevada. First time here in the second half. And she will be coming in for Michaela Matuska. Oh, check that. Ellie Kassebaum will come out. And Selberg, the junior, is in. Ten goals this season with seven assists. And Nevada, as we mentioned, they've got a lot of offense, averaging over six goals a game, have been held in check so far today by Bishop Heelan. And here at the state tournament, I mean, they put four goals up on Bondurant Farrar, three on a good Iowa City Regina team. And now having to play from behind. Kugler will send it towards the net. Played well, though, by Bouillou on the hop. Kugler was uh, off balance there. She came straight onto the ball, which was easy for the goalkeeper to pick up. She needs to get her hips around that ball, lock her ankle and whip the ball in. Um, so just the starting position was slightly off. Von Rack punches it to Freilich. Who will send it on deep, trying to find Bleeker. And that one's going to be kicked out. As it was off of the foot of Bleeker, Sunda Beta will have the possession here on the throw in. Bondurak here to the near side. Brown. And this one punched back. Kassbaum out ahead to Selberg, but it's taken right back by Katie Glover of Heelan. Wetzbarger towards the middle. Kassbaum there to intercept. Not a lot of clear open lines here in the middle. No, it looks like they're just settling into the game here the second half, trying to get a feel of it again after the break. Um, again, uh, Bishop, Bishop Heelan have had two corners into the start of the second half with some good opportunities. Kugler will give it another rip here. Trying to find Kassebaum. And Freilich has that one knocked away for the moment by Selberg, but Vondrak has been good on her feet today. And Heelan will have the possession. You hear the information from the coach. Let Katie take it, the left back. You push on Jessica Brown. <laughs> Glover's toss a little too hard. And Nevada 
We get an open kick here with Clara Spore. Spore has been challenged here today. And we had mentioned she had been rolling right along. Just the second goal of the state tournament that was given up. Again, five seconds before intermission. So if you walked away, you might have to hit the DVR to go back. But it was on a corner kick. As Bleeker connected with Jessica Brown with the header. Five seconds remaining in the first half. Heelan was able to put the lone goal of this game on the board. And really, from which Coach Bodmer just told us here at the half, he said the strength of his team has been keeping opponents out of scoring opportunities. And they've done that for the most part today against Nevada. Yes, they've done a very good job of that. Today they've con contained Abby Stevenson uh, to shooting from distance and it hasn't really threatened the goalkeeper so if they can continue that the, the result could go their way. Forward, forward. And this one sent deep but will be again picked off by Heelan who will just punch it out. Holly Kugler will put it in play. Trying to find Stevenson. You saw the two white jerseys surrounding her. She's seen a lot of that for good reason. And she leads the team in goal scoring. She's been the attacker here today. With multiple shots on goal, but Tristan Beaulieu has had her sights set on her. What a run for Beaulieu. I mean, she didn't start playing goal in at goal for Heelan until last year. Other than that, she was her team's leading goal scorer after her sophomore season. And that had to be a tough decision for Coach Bodemer to make was take your top scorer and make her make her play in net. Well, I tell you what, BJ, he must be uh, very confident in his uh, in his team because to take your top goal scorer and put her in goals is is quite something. Maybe they were lacking in that part of the game, you know, so it's worked for them so far. So coming into the game, Ellie Kassebaum will come in for Abby Stevenson. And also into the game, Aaron Francis will spell Holly Kugler. And Katie B Kassebaum, excuse me, instead of Kugler is out. So 1-0, Bishop Heelan with the advantage 10 minutes into the late half. Don't forget, this is just game one of a triple header here on Iowa Public Television. We've got the Class 2A state championship coming up next as Pleasant Valley and Ankeny will battle here at County Stadium. And then the nightcap, Dowling Catholic looking for their first ever state championship. Take on the... Young Iowa City West women of Troy. And that'll be coming up later this afternoon. Plus, we've got a nice sprinkling of high school, state, track and field championships. By the way, if you want to see them in all, you can log on to IPTV.org to catch up with our good friend Paul Yeager. And what happened at the Blue Oval? Vondrak will punch this one deep and unable to catch up to it is Brown. That's has the lone goal of this game. So Sky Borton will come into the ball game here for Nevada. So we've got a whistle. And also in is Sydney C. Out is Holly Kugler now. And Abby Bremer. I'll be interested to see what changes Coach Davis makes later on into the game. You know, being 1-0 down, will he change his system at the back? Will he go three, push players forward? It'll be interesting to see because they have to go for it now. This one a little wide of the mark. Yeah, I think Bleeker wanted that into feet. She came short, came in between the lines. That possibly should have gone into feet. One of the keys to the game was to get off a good start for Bishop Heelan. They wanted to get a goal early so they can dictate with their defense. They're doing that right now. Yeah, I think both teams, you know, coming into the second half are going a little direct. 
need to settle down. Bishop Heelan need to get back to what they were doing in the first half, getting the ball on the ground. Being patient in the build-up, playing the ball into feet, creating some movement. Um, I think the message from Nevada at halftime was to put pressure on, on Wardsberger as she goes in to collect this ball and just play it back into the back line. Good passing as Katie Glover will control it here along the near sideline. Tries to find Brown, but this one redirected away by Nevada as Sydney C put her foot into it just a moment ago. Francis out ahead to Casabon, but Heelan right there. At what point will Nevada make the adjustment? here in the half if this score continues to hold like this to put more pressure, more bodies into the offensive zone? I, I would say with about 15 minutes to go is, is the time to do it. Go three at the back, maybe a 3-4-3 three, three or a 3-5-2 uh, and start pushing more bodies in the final third. And this one's out, so Nevada will throw it in. But we're going to get a substitution for Bishop Heelan. As Kaylee Ryan, no whistle, will come in at the next dead ball. Again, this one will finally get out. <laughs> it just kind of stopped right before the end line. So now Kaylee Ryan will come into the game for Lexi Stolen. Our Lexi Stolen also will come in. And Nevada will come back in as they get a, give a rest here, albeit pretty short to Abby Stevenson and also Katie Casabon. Lauren Bleeker will now rest for Heelan. Has been their top offensive threat here this afternoon. Yeah, lots of high fives around with her team up 1-0. This one sails high. Feeling able to swing it ahead. Not much of an attack as the Cubs are playing back with Rhodes. And now an opportunity here for Heelan. After the foul. Or the, excuse me, that one was off the head of Nevada. And now we'll go back to the Cubs. That was great pressure from... Uh... Kaylee Ryan down there on the far side coming into that tackle. She came sliding in from nowhere. And the officials have just let them play today, and they have. Just makes the game more entertaining rather than stop, start, stop, start. Brown on the near side. Boy, got an open lane for the moment, but quickly closed down by Sydney C. One nil our score, and Heelan hasn't really gotten a good look here in the second half, except from the corner kick that they had early on. Yeah, correct. I, I think Nevada have tightened up in the midfield in particular, to, you know, to try and stop. Uh, Heelan from playing. I think that that's the key as Vanderek wins a free kick here. This could be dangerous. It's from distance. She thinks she's got a stinger in her right hand. Uh, she took one high, so doing the kicking here will be bull you. Veda will try to form the walls. They have Casabom Stevenson. Up front along with Matuska as they send it towards the net. And this one's going to be hauled in by Spore. That was a routine save by Spore. Now with the numbers going forward and uh, the girls coming in the far post. And it was about uh, probably about 40 yards from goal. Maybe she should have clipped it in in between the penalty spot and the six-yard box. And one thing we haven't seen today is too much of a rush where 
The team's been close to being offsides. I mean, there just hasn't been that chance today. No, there hasn't. I, I must say, both sides have played with a deep line, so it hasn't really, you know, when you play with a higher line, then you create those opportunities for the opposition to be offside. Vondrak. It's a great ball in. Finds Brown. One on one, and it has it taken away late, but Brown able to corral it as she was being harassed by Saunders. Now, as they try to punch it to the middle, remind you, Bleeker is out for Healan. That one got deep, but no shot on goal. Nevada able to fend it off as Matuska. Finds Stevenson. And this has been the tough spot. Get it, tough spot, excuse me, get it, getting it at across midfield. Yeah, I've, I've noticed some tired legs out there. Players walking. Stevenson turned around to a midfield and said, come on, guys, who wants the ball? Nobody wanted it. She had to turn and go forward again. I think, I think they did, there needs to be a little more like, let's get that ball moving quickly. Some changes here coming into the game will be Holly Kugler along with Ellie Kassebaum. And Abby Bremer also in for Nevada. And coming in or getting set to check in for Bishop Heelan is going to be Ray Greer. As she will spot Jensen Freilich, who's played well here today at midfield for Heelan. Pretty much the starting unit back out onto the field for Nevada. Nearing the 21 minute mark here in the second half. Foot race to the corner, and it is just punched back in by Kugler, but handled again by Heelan as Kate Glover send it, or sent it to the offensive zone. Bremer. Can't find Kassebaum on a leaner. And back to the middle. Here's Vondrak. And Nevada being more patient here now with the 1 0 lead, as you would think. They go to the corner. And it looks like we're going to have a corner kick coming up. As that one got tangled up on the far side. And it looks like Lauren Bleeker's trying to get into the game here. See if the official will allow substitutions or not. I think he is. And here comes Bleeker. So she'll spell Jessica Brown. And Bleeker has to come from the bench all the way across the field down to that far corner. And Brown, who has the only goal so far of this game, just checked out. But again, a tall front line for Healan. Here it is, picture in picture. Great angle as Bleeker sends it towards the end. This one is bounced off. And Nevada will punch it out with Kugler. Heelan will hold the possession though. Kassebaum will intercept. Too far ahead as again Nevada having trouble getting the ball past midfield. So inside of 19 minutes to play a 1-0 lead. The lone goal of this game came off of a corner kick with five seconds left in the first half. As Bleeker was able to find Brown, who headed one in. Here's Stevenson. To Casabon. And the beta in the right spot with Matuska. And has it nearly taken away by Vondrak, really harassing her. That's Crushwitz. And Wetzbarger. Again, plays strong defensively, and Heelan will get this 
opportunity. You can see uh, Abby Stevenson's trying to make something happen for Nevada. She's dropping in deep. She's turning. She's trying to run at the back four. Uh, she's, she's trying to make something happen. She's trying to inspire the team and motivate them. And Nevada will throw it in. Getting close to that 15-minute mark, Justin, is what you alluded to, is the fact that's when they'll try to put some more pressure or throw an extra body. Yes, BJ, they've got to do something now. Um, they've got to play a higher line. They've got to take chances. They're too deep, so there's too much space to cover when they come out. They need to step the line out, push players forward. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult to break down Bishop Helam. Freilich will come back in. Uh, she will take the place of Vondrak. So it's a 1-0 game inside of 17 minutes to play. Nail-biting time almost. Yeah, again, get possession given away on a throw, in which... Uh, you know, that, that's, that's your chance. You've got the ball. It's like a free kick. Just throw it into feet. Make it easy. And Stevenson gets taken down on the play. Foul called against Grace Hanno. And so Nevada with an opportunity here. Right near midfield. And you know, if uh, Nevada don't push players forward, then Bishop Helan doesn't need to drop any, any players in deep. Now Rhodes has a good foot. That didn't look like 10 yards. We'll punch it. And just a missed opportunity. Bullyu has been strong, hasn't given up a goal since May 16th. And that just adds to the task of Nevada here with 15.30 to play. Well, statewide coverage of Iowa Girls Championship Sports continues all summer long. Tune in Friday, July 24th for the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Iowa Farm Bureau Girls State Softball Championships from Fort Dodge. Live programming begins at 10. Visit IPTV.org for details of Iowa Girls High School Softball Championships. Stevenson to Kassabaum, who will head it deep. Boyu lays back, lets her team surround the ball, and will be just kicked out by Hanno. So Nevada slowly starting to build some momentum here. As Stevenson trying to get it towards the end line, but cannot catch up with it, so goes right back to Bishop Heelan. I've noticed the coaching staff from Nevada encouraging Abby Stevenson to play higher. She's dropping too, too deep into the midfield. They need her as high as possible, posted up against their center backs, where maybe she can create something on the turn. Freilich in the middle. Healing again. Running it deep. Wetzbarger. It's intercepted by Rhodes. Kassebaum mishandles it. And this one right at midfield. Time winding down on the Cubs here. And Heelan trying to hold on, but now with the attack, here's Freilich. Boy, did not go for the shot. And this one's going to be scooped up after Freilich punched it deep. Score handled that one on the hop. A 
corner kick the difference so far in this one. Nevada played in the state championship a year ago against Davenport Assumption and fell as the Knights had won four straight state titles. They bowed out in the quarterfinals this year. Knocked off by Waterloo Columbus Catholic. And then Heelan came up with a victory over them in the semifinals 1-0. Stevenson trying to play it on a hop. We'll head it up. Now we'll kick it to the side. Well, that ball bouncing high. Trying to be headed back in by Casabon. LA cannot get good footing. That was a difficult angle for Casabon to try and head that ball. She had time and space to possibly bring it down. Um, defender was about five yards off her, so... Uh, you know, just bring it down and see what you can create from that. Casabon to Stevenson. With the right foot trying to send it in. It's low, and Bolu will let it roll. We talk about knowing your surroundings, but there's a foul called on the play. And Nevada... Here's a free kick coming up. Actually, I think it's a corner there, BJ. Oh, a corner, yeah, okay. Deflected off the defender. Oh, that's right. It yeah. went off of Bolu, who was letting it roll, accidentally touched it. So here's a corner here for the Cubs. Abby Bremer. From the corner, Nevada will stack up. Key is to get it high here with inside of 11 minutes to play in the game. Now we'll shoot it out. Wind did not factor that one. I think it was just off of her foot. Nevada deep in the offensive zone. Now using everyone. But again, Heelan sends it right back. Heelan went numbers. And Spore goes to midfield with the pass. One nil, Bishop Heelan with the advantage here on Nevada. And Jessica Brown is set to check back in here for Heelan. As referee Tyler Eason will let her come in. And she'll come in for Lexi Stolen, the sophomore. So the lone goal of the game belongs to Jessica Brown. And she's back in for Heelan. Heelan with the advantage. Here's Brown. Caught up in traffic. Nevada can't clear it. Now the Cubs will just toss it out as Borton put it out high. Glover to Wetzbarger. Indeed, trying to hit Brown, but Nevada tries to turn it around. And when you play that extra person up or you try to become more offensive minded, it can give you troubles under the defensive end. Yes, of course. Um, I think I think Bishop Heelan now really need to keep the ball. They've got the, the ability within the team. They're trying to play it forward as Nevada trying to attack here. But, you know, they, they need to just keep the ball, just spread it around, let Nevada do the work here for the last 10 minutes. We're going to see a last burst of energy here, so... Uh, let's see what happens. Aaron Selberg right there trying to come into the game. 8.40 to play. Uh, she'll come in for Ellie Kassebaum. In the beta. First half had a couple of quick scoring opportunities. But really did not get an open look. I wonder if this is the end of Kassebaum. You know, with a torn MCR. I mean, it's, it's pretty brave of her to be playing right now. Some decisions to be made after this game for her knee.
is Kassebaum in the middle, trying to control traffic, and nobody home. Nevada had four, but nobody charged to the ball. Good time wasting from the goalkeeper. There's Beaulieu. I mean, she's a senior, showing some gamesmanship there, letting some, at least 30 seconds go off the clock. She's been there before, experience. Well, the official, you just heard him say nothing, and now a whistle. And this one will go against Nevada. Foul called on the play. Looks like it was on Blika. Bremer called for the foul as Bleeker took the punishment. So free kick coming out. From the side, and this is Bleeker who put it towards the middle. This one kicked out, Bondrak hanging in the middle. Nevada cannot clear it. They finally do as they put it out more in front. And this one sent in, but it will be handled by Spore. Boy, putting the attempt on there was Chloe Wetzbarger. But it's handled by Nevada. So we go to the corner. Here's Blinker towards the net, and this is partially deflected. It's open! And it's a yeah. goal, but it's... Was she offside? Called back, I think, for a free kick by the looks of it. Linesman doesn't have a flag up, his flag up. We're given a penalty. They're going to give a penalty here. I blew the whistle. It's a PK. Why well, it was in the back of the net. Do you want the PK or do you want the goal? No, referee, you don't give them a decision. <laughs> Tyler Eason. Don't let them decide. It's a penalty. You've given the penalty. And so here it is, Lauren Bleeker, one-on-one -on -one against Claire Sporer. So Sporer on her toes with 6.06 to go as the clock has stopped. So penalties called. Here's the shot, and it's into the net. Goal for Bleeker! What a day for Lauren Bleeker and an assist, and now a goal. And Heelan takes a 2-0 lead as they're trying to win their first ever state championship. Bleeker with a great, great ball across the box. I didn't think that was a penalty, to be honest with you, but it was still finished at the end. Well taken penalty, like a seasoned pro into the top corner. Right foot across the body. And Kaylee Ryan was ahead of the ball there. So a number of things was going through the minds of Tyler Eason, but he saw the infraction. And Bishop Heelan with a commanding now 2-0 lead here on Nevada with 5.38 to play. Two goals late in the game. Here's a free kick for Mara Rhodes. This went deep, but it will be handled by Beaulieu. Playable with the pop-up. Well, three out of the last four years, Bishop Heelan has been to the state championship only to come up empty-handed. They've been in seven straight semifinals. Now trying to win their first title in soccer. This one out, so Heelan will have it back here. Boya has done really well in goals. I mean, she's playing that position like she's played it, you know, for her whole life. So, saving that with ease, no big deal. It's a bit of gamesmanship, good understanding of the game as she takes this goal kick. Maddie Peck into the game now for Heelan, a senior. Replacing Lexi Stolen.
And Nevada also coming in with some substitutes. Holly Kugler is back in. Also in is Kaylee Ryan. As she'll take the place of Jessica Brown. 3.45 to play. 2-0. Heelan. Stevenson trying to keep it low. Here's Kugler. Could not get the handle, but chased down by Glover of Heelan. Out of the middle. Kassebaum. Stevenson tries to feed Kassebaum. And it denied on the play by Lindsay. 3 minutes to go. And this one deflected out so Keelan will throw it in. Two nil Heelan. Lauren Bleeker, what a day. The Northern Iowa recruit has an assist and a goal. What a way to top off the season. Don't want to speak too soon with two minutes to go, but I'm being a little bit optimistic here. And Aveda has had trouble advancing Heelan's defense, which has been their staple all year. Again, they haven't. Last time they gave up a goal was May 16th against Urbandale in a 1 0 loss. And they've been. What makes them, actually? I want to ask you, what makes them so tough to, to score on? Well, you know, BJ, it's, it's, it's having a tight back four, uh, compact midfield, uh, and off the ball, just, you know, not allowing time and space for the opposition. Uh, to be honest with you, I think uh, Bishop Helam have done a great job today, um, all round, on and off the ball. Uh, they've done, I think, Wartsburger and Vandrak, as the two holding midfielders for Bishop Helam, uh, have been really, really stable. They've hardly put a foot wrong there. You know, they've, they've won the ball, they've distributed it into feet, they've cleaned up when they've needed to, they've covered each other. Uh, to me, those two have been the key players. It's been one in the midfield today. Stevenson tried to center it, but it was knocked away by the Crusaders. As Taylor Beaulieu, who's been strong and now innovative, really making a big push. Stevenson from the corner tries to center it to Casabon, but this one knocked out and another corner kick here for Nevada. 50 seconds to play. They need to get their whole team in there, to be honest with you. And have to hurry. Holly Kugler goes to Stevenson, now to Kugler. To Stevenson along the baseline, now to the center, and this one headed towards the net, but it's up and over. Popped up as Michaela Matuska. Too strong in the play, and we've got 20 seconds to play, and Heelan is going to be winning their first ever state title in girls soccer how about this the frustration has been there with that long drive from sioux city here to des moines and muscatine and finally they're going to be able to bring home a state title Bishop Heelan shuts down the competition. They don't give up a goal all state tournament long. And they take down one of the top offensive teams in the state who had been averaging over six goals a game. Held scoreless here today. 2-0. Heelan victorious over the Nevada Cubs. What a job done here by Heelan, and they did it with their defense again and a nice dose of Lauren Bleeker. Yeah, I think, like I said before, I think the game was won in midfield. The, the, the trio in the midfield with uh, Vandrak, Wartsberger, and uh, Greer, I thought they were fantastic. Uh, they did a fantastic job in there. And the game was won there. I mean, 
uh, Nevada allowed them to play. They didn't close down quick enough. Wartsburger was allowed to dictate the pace. Um, and, then, and then again, when you've got a player like Bleeker wide on the right, who can get forward and distribute. I mean, she had an assist, scored the penalty. But I think on the day, I think uh, Bishop, Bishop Healam were the best team. 2-0. Bishop Healam will go over to their fan base over there in the stands and say, yes, we will be bringing home what we came here to do, which is the championship trophy. There'll be some celebrations in Sioux City tonight, won't they, BJ? Oh, there definitely <laughs> will. Big win for the Crusaders. And Nevada, a fantastic season, but came up short as they ran into a defensive machine in Bishop Heelan today. Coming up will be the selection of the all-tournament team. Along with the presentation of the trophies. This is game one of a triple header here on Iowa Public Television. Let's go to the PA announcer, Al Hilton. Presenting the awards of members of the Girls Union Board of Directors, George Tracy, Deanne Kramer, and Roger Francis. Presenting the medals for the all tournament team will be Jim Wright of the Iowa High School Soccer Coaches Association. Here is your 2015 Class 1A all tournament team. From Bishop Heelan, Jensen Freilich. From Bishop Healing, Tristan Beaulieu. From Nevada, Michaela Matuska. From Bishop Healing, Jessica Brown. From Nevada, Mara Rhodes. From Iowa City, Regina, Kennedy Brown. From Waterloo, Columbus Catholic, Grace Surma. From Iowa City, Regina, Jenny Wick. From Waterloo, Columbus Catholic, Megan Meppelmeal. From Nevada, Abby Stevenson. And your Class 1A 2015 All-Tournament Team Captain from Bishop Heelan, Chloe Wetzbarger. Well, Heelan does it with defense. 2-0, they shut down Nevada today to win the Class 1A State Championship, their first ever in school history for girls' soccer as you take a look at that All-Tournament team. And how about... The captain, Chloe Wetzbarger, they're known for their defense, and she played very well in this tournament. Well, BJ, to me, uh, Wetzbarger was the best player um, in the afternoon. I thought she cleaned up well, good technique, got the ball. She kept it simple, played it into feet. I mean, she was just simple in the end. Sponsor of the Iowa Girls Athletic Union. Ladies and gentlemen, the Class 1A runner-up, the Nevada Cubs, and head coach, Randy Davis.
And your 2015 Class 1A state champions, the Crusaders from Bishop Helan and head coach Jared Bodemer. Bishop Helan, your winner in Class 1A, 2-0 as they get a couple of goals, won by Jessica Brown, a header off of a corner kick right before the end of the first half. And then Lauren Bleeker on a penalty kick at the 74th minute as Bishop Helan wins their first ever state title. Yeah, BJ, I think uh, they did their homework today. They were the better team in, in my eyes. Um, again, the game was won in the midfield. I thought they were fantastic there. Wurzberger controlled it. She distributed. She cleaned up. She won tackles. Um, to me, she was the key key to the game. You know, no credit to give. You've got to give some credit to Nevada. They did try. Final score: Bishop Helan, your winner, two nil as they knock down the Nevada Cubs. As they're going to be heading back to Sioux City, very very happy. Well, we've got more soccer to come your way. The 2A championship will be coming up here in mere moments. How about this matchup? Pleasant Valley and the Hawkheads of Ankeny. They'll duel it out here at the county stadium in just a few moments here on Iowa Public Television. Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Soccer Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Uh, what do you want to listen to? Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Soccer Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist. Providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. 